Hi everybody, after a long long time the mister is back, Mr. 305. Dolly. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Whoa, what, huh? Oh, what's that? Oh, he's not, this isn't, oh, it's three, oh, he's in Miami. Ah, ah, that makes, that makes sense. And here we are everybody, after a decade the real mister is back, Big Boy Artifact 303, Hungarian producer Zolt Peter. The Emotions Man, Mr. Tenderness and Passion, Mr. I'ma make you feel things that you've been avoiding all your life. Well, uh, I can feel, I feel manic and a little bit psychotic. Now I'll admit, I haven't listened to Artifact 303's Back to Space album. I know it's one of the best, everyone says, and I'll believe anything I get told. Anything. I've heard a couple of compilation tracks and a few remixes, so you know, I uh, I know nothing. But I'm here to learn. I'm here to feel. The album is cosmic, but forgoes a lot of the screeching acid that we've heard recently and propulses us in a different way. A psychedelic, melodic, blasting kind of way. Focus is put on melody, harmony, and syncopated psychedelic rhythms, resulting in beautiful orchestral electronica. This is good. Good, because I want to live. Good, because I want to experience. Fuck it. Fucking intro. Yours old Peter, the musician, the man. Bring a beat in after 17 seconds. See if I care. It's fine. The first half doesn't scream, Lay down and worship me, you dumb fine models. But the last half, well, well that says, Lay down and worship me, you dumb fucking models. TBH, the layers chill pretty hard until the second half when it comes along with a nuclear increase and a sweet melody that finds itself over the hard and fast full bodied kick drums. Quite frankly, I didn't see it coming. It was all inflexible sun sailing before it went all boom boom wow look at me with my big melody. <laughs> and I don't need to pretend to respect that. I'm not in a position where I'm forced to get it. But I do. I do get it. Boom boom pow wow it's a blast that hits and drives and gives me tingles. If I had to criticise something, I uh, I, I uh, don't think that I would. That's right. If it came down to criticising this track or death, well, well, I'd call all my friends and family and say, Well guys, it's been fun. You've all really added so much laughter, love and colour into my life. More than I thought I was ever going to get to experience. And you've allowed me to add some into yours. You've invited me in and tolerated me, which really is one of the most meaningful things anyone could have ever done. I used to not care much about anything. I was completely apathetic. But you all changed that and gave me a bunch of beautiful people to care about, making this world richer and worthwhile to be in. I really can't thank you enough. But, well, that doesn't mean I'm gonna do my boy Artie 3 or 3 like that and I ain't no bitch. The second track decides to be a soft flutter in a relative sense. It isn't hard bodied and difficult to negotiate with like the first, it's euphoric as all fuck and invites us in to get to know one another. It's sexy and simply emotional. TBH, if I was an EDM hype beast DJ in a club with a policy on collared shirts and enclosed leather shoes, with a bouncer who only lets in one man for every three ladies, and you better believe those guys are paying double for entry. In a venue like that, I would still play this track to see if we could make some long term relationships happen. Worst case scenario, people learn to look inwards to understand themselves better, creating long term relationships based on rich and deep emotional connections. Best case scenario, everyone starts fucking in the bathrooms. It's a win win. TBH, I can't even figure out if Dreamland is mid tempo or up tempo. Artifact 303 has stolen my mind and made everything too wonderful to care about. It doesn't scream or shout, but sucks you in for a stimulating, euphorically good time with a melody that spins you through a rainbow cloud and into the sky kingdoms of Goa. Your favourite comedian is there, good to see ya. Your favourite friends, a few sex crazed nymphomaniacs and your favourite foods. But not just that, another melody at what seems like the final moment is also there and then one more melody at the actual last moment comes along. The last person I heard do this was Beyonce in a global world hit Love on Top. The next octave is rich, humanity is bewitched, start investing in your futures because this track gives us at least another 10 years of civility and there's no guarantee that Mr. Feelings Man is going to be here in 10 more years to help out again. Solo Warden brings that full on, no holds barred, psychotic, chaotic, wild rhythm that I was expecting after track 1. We get hardcore spirals and seriously nasty grooves. In a dancey motion, my arms go up and they go left, 
then they wobble over this way, then they make me do a few jumps. If you plan on meeting this track in outer space, you're gonna need to bring a whole lot more harnesses than you were thinking. A lot more oxygen tanks, a bucket of aluminium paint, and you're gonna need, well, well to be perfectly frank, you, you're gonna need a space vessel. It creates wild feelings and senses of explosive estrogen and a little bit of testosterone that allows me to understand other people in a way that quite frankly, I've only heard about in books. I suppose understanding other people helps you understand the world then ultimately helps you understand your place in the world. Then it helps you use people like a fucking sociopath to increase your social and political capital until you're in a position of real power. Then, then the fun really begins. That's all well and good. I don't have a problem with any of that. It's hard to have a problem with anything when the final act of this musical piece of art ejaculates ribbons of rainbow synthesis all over us. He keeps the vibe going strong with unidentified. Industrial squelchers and twirling arps hypnotize us around a few stars and across some gas fields until, oh fuck, it's an asteroid storm. The final act cuts off our comms with major Tom at ground control as the asteroids lose their discernible orbital path, leaving us on our own with the space rocks. Every moment unites in a final orchestral act that quite frankly, we're lucky to get through unscathed. It's outright dangerous as it starts flapping bolts of vivacity every which way. And here is some advice. Blame whoever you want for whatever you want. But with that being said, don't you go blaming other people when the electricity of this track's final act shocks you. You knew the risks, well and good. However, does it bother me that the outlandish, irresponsible and bullshit final act got away without getting a fine from the local safety warden? Yeah. TBH, it sure fucking does. So like they say, if someone has to do something, then it might as well be done by Teddy. You've earned yourself a nice little mega fine, Peter Zolt, which can be paid off with more tracks and another album. Comprende? Now you might think that you're caring, empathetic, and a good listener, but when this track goes <laughs> you're just another sucker on a supersonic trip to the Whirlpool Andromeda and Redshift 7 galaxies. To be fair, we do get an opportunity to figure our shit out at the 420, lol, mark. But you better do it quick because before long we're back in the world of light speed travel and euphoria. At the same time, it's abrasive and soft. I don't get it, but I don't get a lot about this wild world. Sometimes I try to understand, but then I think, hey, 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 why don't I stop worrying about particular things and how I feel about them and just listen to some ID303? And then I do. And then it does solve my problem. It's not my fault that everyone on earth hasn't figured this out. What am I meant to do about that? What am I meant to do? Help? <laughs> I don't think so. I got summer storm to listen to and a whole lot of tea to drink. That being said, it is important to be honest to yourself. It's important to take a minute to ask, who am I? But it's also important to listen to some crazy fucking psychedelic go trance. And if I was a shaman with 16 years of experience in applying the correct medicine for mental afflictions, I'd probably just subscribe an eternity of dancing to this track on a dance floor with like-minded, happy people. All the periphery moments are dark and chaotic. The melody is fast with its own agenda. Try to keep up, but don't be upset with yourself if you lose it once or twice. Take it as an opportunity to grow and develop or throw all that shit out the window and get crazy in the solar storm of electric energy for a temporary, but enjoyable, blast of crazy psychedelic god trance. It might be a favourite from the album, and the reason for that is because of its exciting, audacious and haughty drops of psychedelia that build up into magnetic uncontrollable melodies. Still on a high, Secret Space comes in to give us a hit of that heavy space funk and groove. It has this shocking warmth of safety and security, a delicate essence of empathy and a pathway to a fantastic, uplifting, euphoric place full of extragalactical cosmic waves. A place where you can safely address the deeply hidden internal intergenerational trauma that comes from a life with a fate of its own that applies pressure on you and continues applying pressure on you with no end or mercy in sight. But now, with the power of this track, I can grow the inner strength to deal with all of that. Oh, I can take the groovy way out. Allow the melody of this track to propulse my inner darkness away in a neon ray of cobalt melodic light before pulling me into a cosmic dance floor with all of the other funky beings. We got rhinos, homo sapiens, kangaroos, they're funky too. We got possums, extraterrestrial beings and an unfortunate amount of tapeworm. Tapeworm, are you, are you sure? We got tapeworm. Turns out they're pretty funky as well. I'm not gonna lie, the tapeworm is a problem. It's a big problem. Made less serious and urgent to deal with when this musical composition comes on and solves all of the other problems. The ones that don't involve being a parasitic host. I love vocal samples in trance, which means I love the intro of this track. 
It's abducting and encumbering. I feel free. Blue violets of melody fly breezily overhead. Hyperallergenic pollen fills the air. Golden tones bounce down and dreamy divinity is dazzlingly and definitively delivered. The major scales give me major elation. The hypnotic patterns of tonal motion give my general mood emotional improvement. And the darker lows that grime their way around the track soar through my amygdala just for fun. One of the sweeter tracks from the album, and a good way to bring our minds back to some sort of state that allows us to carry on with our days like regular, normal, fucking people. There's another favourite. The down tempo final track straight up bops. After all of that, two dreamy final tracks might just be appropriate. The synth around this track is smooth Saudi Arabian silk. Back when people used to care about Saudi Arabian silk. No one cares about SAS anymore. It's all Egyptian this and hemp that. <coughs> Actually, uh, hemp, uh... The sweet beautiful melody that comes in at 2 minutes and 40 seconds is one of the sweetest most beautiful melodies that has ever come in at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And not to go into a random rant or anything. But yeah, maybe the world has borne people into an inescapable past that makes it impossible to see people for who they really are. And maybe we feel like we need to spend the rest of our lives dedicated to a predated cause, mission, philosophy or rivalry that we have no hope of understanding or enacting change within. Maybe we do. Or maybe we just haven't given this track the ample opportunity to solve every problem that has ever existed. I'm not saying it's the solution to everything. I'm just saying, have we even tried? You know what? This album may have not been pop music. It may have not had any features by Ariana Grande. No samples from Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower. It wasn't reggae. In fact, it didn't even have hints of Danish ska band extraordinaire Von Du. It wasn't even K-pop. But despite all of that, I still loved it. I'm just happy to have an entire album of the OG Artifact 303. The tracks are tremendous in their own right and bring enjoyment and ecstasy into the universe. And whoa fucking bow wow is the universe lucky for that. Great artwork and design by the Ahankara art crew. Great mastering by 4CN Studios and Mr. Zolt, who's been flexing his mastering skills for a while now. Nice new tapestry to go with it. And fantastical musical writing from Peter. Each track is varied and has its own thing going for it. There's more psychedelia than you can fit in a black hole. The layers are smart, purposeful, and powered on cosmic canola oil. But oh fuck. Now I have to go back and listen to his 2012 album Back to Space. I gotta to listen to Lumen's Phantasm release, Imantra's new Space Ambient Space Opera, Shambhala the Record's second release, Papa Void EP, the new Vast Gnosis release, released and unreleased Goa Records, Bypass Unit, I'm minded us later. <laughs> Very busy. So until next time, this has been Teddy.